Welcome to this 3ds Max tutorial. All the furniture seen in this scene was made using this simple technique. I like how it imitates furniture in real life. Real furniture is not perfect and when you build it it shows each piece of wood has been glued, attached. We'll be building this night table with chamfered edges, supports, tapered legs, and a drawer. The idea is to make the table look very realistic with the least amount of effort. Let's start by setting the system units to one thirty-second of an inch. Make sure you're on the perspective window. Let's start now by creating a box with dimensions of one and a quarter by one and a quarter by twenty-eight inches high. This will be our first leg. Let's also change the viewport to hidden line and press J on your keyboard to get rid of those um, brackets. Select the leg and convert it to an editable poly. Then select the edges on the side of the leg and this will be a good time to chamfer the edges. We'll set the value to about 2 seconds of an inch which is roughly the same thing as 1 16th of an inch. Now while the edges are selected Click on connect and make two segments. Let's type two here and accept. Now select the vertices of the top segment and move them up. This will be the top of the support of the drawer. Somewhere around here. Also select the lower portion here to the segment. And Let's take a closer look. We'll work on this face now. Select the two inner segments and make two more segments using connect. Then pinch them to about 56. Now let's chamfer these four vertices to about 2 30 seconds of an inch click on chamfer and type the value here. Next, select this polygon and extrude it to about let's say seven inches. Right now we are working only on making half the table. We will mirror the portion to create the full table later. Let's work on the side of the table now. The support on the left hand side. Select these two vertices, uh, segments and use connect to add two more segments here. Let's pinch them about 14 and then select the polygon which is made to extrude let's say to about 6 inches. I think that looks fine. Now we are going to mirror this image using symmetry from the modifier list. Symmetry is about here. Now click on symmetry and open this plus symbol. Click on mirror and using those yellow handles select the white axis, Y axis, and pull the image so you can see the duplicate. Put them together the threshold value will control how close the objects must be before they weld each other. Now right click on symmetry and select collapse all to make it one piece. Click yes. This object is still editable. You can change it at any time you want. Now let's add another symmetry modifier and repeat the steps to make the back half of the table. 
this time select the X axis arrow you may have to flip the axis click on flip here and move the object put it together again so it welds it itself now let's work on the rear panel like to work here but this these two segments are don't look the same they're different so instead we're going to work on the bottom piece here on this support piece so select the these short segments and create two more segments using connect and you can pinch to about 19. Then select the polygons we just created and extrude them to about the height of the furniture, maybe uh, just a hair below the, the height of those legs. Now I will move the legs out a bit for stability, you know, to make it look more realistic. To do this, select all the legs vertices and let's pull them apart using the uniform scale tool. Go to the top view and make the, make the adjustment there by pulling out on the little green, I mean on the outer triangle of the modifier tool. Just a little bit. That should do it. Now we can make the ends of the legs a bit smaller because I want to taper the legs. Select the vertices of each individual leg and using the same procedure change the value. Look at, the, look at this area when I change the value I'm going to use uh, about 56 and I'm going to do the same thing for each leg. We should do this individually to each leg so we don't run into problems. We will make the drawer about the same way. I will speed up a little bit the process to save some time. Just make it fit in that opening. then it's better to isolate right click on the object and click on isolate selection this way we can work on it on only on this piece so using connect make your segments the segments you're going to need for the back of the drawer This could be almost, uh, you know, a quarter of an inch. Then select all these um, polygons and extrude them. You know, for now maybe about uh, eight inches or so. Now we will finish the back using bridge. After you make your polygon on the back with the polygon symbol highlighted click on one side of the polygon to be bridged after you click bridge select the polygon and then select the other polygon and when you click the back is done now we can adjust the length of the drawer I think if you were making this uh, to specific uh, uh, sizes, uh, you would have to type those values, and they will always just to work right. Now let's add the bottom support. Create a box roughly the size of the table. You know, about three, uh, I'd say a half an inch high. Place it above, right here, and uh, 
what we'll do is after converting to to an editable poly we will select the uh, the sides so we can extrude them just past the leg not not the entire leg just halfway into the leg so select the uh, the sides there are three types of extrusion you know group is the default when you select group it uh, it stacks them in one place like this if you select uh, local normal it will ex extrude them okay but it will weld them as they go outside we need to select uh, by polygon to get the individual extrusions right and then you can adjust the length But that seems to be just right. Now we need to do uh, how to make the top of the table, and we'll I'm kind of rather go quickly about this. Mm, this furniture, when you work this way, it appears at the end that the pieces were separated. Uh, in the beginning, that you put them together, you glue them, you cut them, and you you know things look just about right. You should check some of the furniture that IKEA or other companies show it on the web. Now let's have a quick render. Okay, that's fine. Let's add a door knob, I mean a drawer knob. We'll just make a quick one here using a cylinder. Alright, add some, I'm, I'm using V-Ray as the uh, my render so I can add a V-Ray plane and uh, some lights. Um, the default lighting in 3ds Studio also works fine. For this tutorial let's just do this. And they're looking, that's looking okay. Let's move the lights, fix them up a little bit. We can also add material. Uh, with a little bit of light sheen and, and reflective color as if uh, this furniture was painted so find a you know adjust the lights a bit you know size wise possibly uh, intensity direction and we'll render again Great. Another important thing is uh, furniture is the bottom uh, of the table legs. They never look right unless you raise them a little. So we will do that. We'll select the bottom uh, uh, polygons of the legs. And all at once we can use a bevel to extend them just a little bit. Most furniture has have something on the bottom to raise it up a little bit. That's why we have a shadow. Now let's take the entire table and just move it up above the level and level it with the ground. And finally, we can make the uh, lights invisible so we don't show it at, at render. And we're done. Render the final, you know, after your adjustments, and uh, there you are. There you have it. I think that that looks pretty good. Well, thank you for, for watching.